nervous system as the control and coordinating center of the body. In this lesson, we are going to study about the components of nervous system and transmission of nerve impulses. All living organisms are response to stimulus. Changes in Changes in the activities of organisms to a particular stimuli are called reaction or response. Living organisms show their response to different kinds of stimuli like light, heat, cold, sound, pain and touch and touch. working together of various organs to produce proper response to various stimuli is called coordination in animals including human the coordination between the various cells and organs is important for their activities to maintain physiological balance is called homeostasis nervous system the nervous system is made up of three components neurons neuroglia and nerve fibers if we come to the neuron neuron are the structural and functional unit of nervous system important one word neurons are the structural and functional unit of the nervous system the neuroglia is also called as synglial cells they do not conduct the nerve impulses nerve fibers the nerve fibers are bundled together and they will form the nerves in order to carry the information from one place to the another place. The next one is the structure of neuron. Important 7 marks question. The neurons are having three important parts. Cyton, dendrites and axon. Okay. Cyton dendrites and axon now if you come to the high tone they are also called as a cell body and in the center you will be having the nucleus and uh, they are filled with the cytoplasm and that cytoplasm is called as a neuroplasm and they are having thread like structures and that is called as a nasal granules the dendrites are the branched process they will conduct the nerve impulses. The next one is the axon. Axon is the long process. Then axon is covered by myelin sheath. And they are having the nodes. Nodes means where they will arise. And it is called as the nodes of Ranvier. At the terminal end they will be having the synaptic knob or synapses and this synaptic knob is important because they will pass the messages or nerve impulses from one neuron to the next neuron okay and they will transmit the chemicals called as an neurotransmitters so important seven marks question next one is the types of neurons the neurons are divided into three types unipolar bipolar and multipolar okay unipolar bipolar and multipolar this uh, this answer is an important answer okay unipolar here this is a one process both axon and dendron will act okay one process both act as a axon and dendron it is present in the early embryo important one word that unipolar is present in the early embryo but it is absent in the adult embryo the next it is absent in the adult okay the next one is the bipolar bipolar means two process one axon and one dendron and this one is present bipolar neuron is present in the retina of the eye retina of the eye means that is eye is made up of 
three parts okay and that retina only that bipolar neuron is present and multipolar neuron means it is many neurons are many axon and dendron are present in it that is multipolar that's why they are called as an multipolar and they are present in the cerebral cortex of the brain okay unipolar is present in the early embryo bipolar is present in the retina of the eye multipolar is present in the cerebral cortex of the brain the next one according to the functions of neuron they are divided into three types sensory or afferent neuron motor or afferent neuron then association neuron okay sensory sensory means they will sense organs will receive the message and they will pass it to the central nervous system motor means from the nervous system central nervous system they will passes the messages to the different parts of the body association means both that is sensory and motor sensory means from the sensor from the sense organs to the central nervous system motor means from the central nervous system to the different parts of our body association means both according to the presence and absence of the myelin sheath they are divided into two types myelinated nerve fibers and non myelinated nerve fibers myelinated means that axon is covered by axon axon is covered by myelin sheath and it is called as a myelinated nerve fibers non myelinated means that axon is not covered by myelin sheath so it is called as a non myelinated nerve fiber both myelinated and non myelinated will form the white matter and gray matter of the brain okay important one word myelinated and non myelinated nerve fibers will form white matter and gray matter of the brain transmission of nerve impulses the informations from the surroundings will received by the nerve impulses and they are transmitted as the electrical impulses by receptors the receptors are located in the sense organs sense organs means eye ear nose tongue and then skin so the sense organs will receive the information and they will passes to the brain now if you come to the the neuron so the nerve impulses are passed into the dendrites the dendrites will pass the messages to the cyton and axon okay the nerve impulses will pass on to the dendrites the dendrites will passes to the cell body and axon and here is the synapses are having the important neurotransmitter and they will secrete the chemicals called as an acetylcholine human nervous system the human nervous system is divided into three central nervous system peripheral nervous system and autonomic nervous system okay central nervous system peripheral nervous system autonomic nervous system the central nervous system is very important in order to passes the information and it consists of the uh, brain and the spinal cord peripheral nervous system will connect the nerves to the brain and the spinal cord autonomic nervous system having the nerves for sympathetic nerves and parasympathetic nerves the next one is the brain brain is the controlling center and it is covered by three connective tissue membrane or and they are called as an meninges okay important one word three connective membranes or meninges the three membranes are dura mater ocnoid membrane and pia mater dura mater is the outermost fibrous layer 
Organoid membrane is the middle membrane and it is a delicate in nature. Then pia mater is the innermost delicate and thin membrane which is richly supplied with the blood. Okay, the brain is covered by thin three membranes: dura mater, arcnoid, and pia mater, and three are called as an meninges. The human brain is made up of three parts: forebrain, midbrain, and hindbrain. Forebrain consists of cerebrum and diencephalon. Midbrain is having four hemisphere bodies. Hindbrain is consists of cerebellum, pons, and medulla of oblongata. Now, if you come to the cerebrum. Cerebrum is the first largest portion of the brain and it occupies two third of the brain. And the cerebral uh, cerebrum is divided into two hemispheres called as an cerebral hemispheres. And at the base of the cerebral hemisphere, they are connected by band of nerve fibers called as corpus callosum. Okay, important one word. Now, if you come to the cerebral hemisphere they are having they are divided into four lobes front front lobe parietal lobe temporal lobe and occipital lobe and these four lobes are called as an cerebral lobes the next one is the functions of the cerebrum if you come to the cerebrum cerebrum is very important for thinking intelligence consciousness memory imagination reasoning and will power now cerebrum is having the outer portion that is called as a gray matter called cerebral cortex and inner portion is the white matter called cerebral medulla then the brain is wrapped in a layer called as thalamus thalamus is the relay center for sensory and motor signals below the thalamus the hypothalamus is present it is and it consists of involuntary functions involuntary function means hunger thirst sleep hypothalamus hypothalamus is important functions involuntary functions hunger thirst sleep sweating sexual desire anger fear water balance and blood pressure and it will regulates the water balance nala thermoregulator and it controls the secretion of pituitary gland that is the link between the nervous system and endocrine gland now if you come to the midbrain the midbrain is consists of thalamus and hindbrain they are having the four rounded bodies called as an corpora quadrigemina and it controls the visual and auditory cerebellum cerebellum is the second largest part of the brain it controls voluntary movements and maintain body balance The next one is the pons. Pons, a Latin word meaning bridge. It is a bridge between lobes of cerebellum. It controls respiration and sleep cycle. Medulla of oblongata. Medulla oblongata is the posterior part of the brain. It connects spinal cord and various parts of the brain. Medulla of oblongata controls heartbeat, respiration, and contraction of blood vessels. More information about the brain. The human brain consists of nearly sixty percentage of fat. The molecules determine the brain ability are essential fatty acids. The essential fatty acids. cannot be synthesized but it obtained from food fish green leafy vegetables walnut or rich sources of 
essential fatty acids the electroencephalogram eeg is an instrument to record the electrical impulses of brain an eeg can detect the abnormalities in the brain waves and it helps in diagnose the brain tumor and head injuries adult brain is about 3 pounds 75 percentage of brain is made up of water sperm whale is about 20 pounds human brain grows 3 times its size in the first year of life and continues to grow until 18 years old headache it is caused by the chemical reaction of the brain brain of the human contains 100 billion neurons neurons are the structural and functional unit of brain brain uses 20 percentage of oxygen and blood in our body